much of an introducer. <laughs> this is Dungeons and Dragons. This is Crate and Crowbar. This is going to be terrible. <laughs> it's Crate and Cobalt. Well, hopefully, a lot of fun. <laughs> Crate and Cobalt. <laughs> professional names for professional people on a professional, professional game. Yeah. So you've got a good, yeah, nicer yeah. voice. Okay, so when you're ready, um, give us a wee... Or, no, oh, I'll tell you what, I may as well do it because I... Yeah, right. Okay, recording. Yeah, uh, yeah. Recording. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to the Crate and Cobalt D&D podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good. That's that's a really good. Introduction. Perfect. I love it. Yep, yeah, love it. So Perfect. I'm just going to have to introduce myself now because I've done such a good job. All right, I'm Quinn, and I will be playing the halfling, the elderly halfling bard, uh, Bree Hearthlight. I am Eli, and I will be playing Yigbeth, the human paladin who hates criminals. Right. I am uh, Bokbarov, and I will be playing the Dragonborn fighter, Aradar. I'm Keen, and I'll be playing the ranger, Ja Mi. Okay, and what race are you? Uh, elf. Cool. Nice, nice diverse cast. Yes. So... We're going to move you into the first scene. Ooh. And if you zoom out, you'll notice there's two uh, different layers to the ship. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to place yourself in one of the hammocks at the bottom. I don't, I don't see anything. Um, you should be in the... Uh, hmm. Did your scene change? I'm just blue. So a blue box. Hmm. Um, can anyone put their uh, put their tokens onto the map? Uh, yeah, but mine is going to be... Oh no, it's fine. I guess it sticks to the token. I can mine see that. I can see... Um... <laughs> Yeah, let us see blue. Hmm. Right, we're gonna have to get this sorted out. Uh, you know, if worse comes to the worst, we'll just um, uh, just get uh, basic line drawing of the thing. Not sure if it's just a matter of it's something that uh, needs to load in for you. Maybe. Um, I'm just going to drop you into hammock. Give it a wee second, um, and I'll start start the session. Okay. So, everyone ready? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So. You wake as the morning bell is rung. There's the creak of timber, the sound of gulls, and the fresh sea air in your nostrils. The sailing so far, even with a couple of quite unpleasantly rough stretches, it's been fast and uneventful. The ship that you're on is a small, strong, and fast transport vessel. It's called the Damned Compass, and it's bound for the city of Semiaba. The Damned Compass is not primarily a passenger ship, but it takes on passengers whenever they have room. So, could everyone give me a perception roll, please? Um, is it d20? Uh, yeah, roll a d20 and... Whatever perception modifier you have. Uh, zero, I think. No, uh, 11. My passive... Wait. 
being confused now. <laughs> Why um, do I see the see. Uh, modifier? Perception. Oh yeah, there it is. It is plus one. Okay. D twenty rule. Uh, ja, what is your modified tool? Uh, thirteen. All right, plus three. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And who else? Who hasn't rolled? Anyone hasn't rolled? No, everyone's rolled. Um. Okay. So Bree. You, uh, you start tossing and turning in the middle of the night, but you're not fully w wakened up. Okay. Um, you hear a strange sort of scratching and clicking noises, mm -hmm. but that just seems slightly different from the usual sort of noise of the ship. Um, but you don't really... It doesn't wake you up enough to for you to, you know, actually think much about it. So okay. you sleep through till the morning. <laughs> Okay. Will I remember anything when I wake up? Will I remember that I'd heard a noise? You would, but you okay. it wouldn't necessarily be the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. Okay, so you wake up to a fine morning, and on days like this that are very calm, uh, the meals, the simple meals that they serve here, uh, are just taken on deck. There's a couple of benches and stuff to sit on. Mm-hmm. Um, your breakfast is bread that still clings to its freshness. A few dried meats, a bit of fruit, whatever the passen you passengers might have you know, brought with you. There are two uh, fellow passengers with you. One is a human man called Donny, and the other is another human. He's a rather quiet gentleman, and he really doesn't mix with the rest of the crew. Okay. So. So as you're sitting around having, you know, having your breakfast, you might want to sort of have a little conversation with each other, getting to know each other. Some of you may know each other already. Uh, we settled on the thing I suggested, Quinn, or us meeting in a. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So um. So we so, met while I was chasing a, crim a criminal, and you somehow disrupted that situation, and I was a bit grumpy. Uh, and then we've met again uh, by chance on the ship. Yeah. Okay. He he might not be the uh, his, his character might not like mine. <laughs> right. Uh, Particularly much, but uh, <laughs> but Bree won't let that get to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So what what do you guys eat? Are you guys just eating the eating the food, eating the bread, and whatever okay. you're provided? Do you have anything that you might have brought with you to uh, to add to your breakfasts? Uh, uh, what do I have? There's no real there's no real facility for baking on a boat, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm gonna. You feel very out of sorts. I do. I do feel. I do feel very out of my element, <laughs> when I don't have an oven. Right. Okay. So, um, let's see. What about you, Vop or or Cian? Have you any uh, any things you'd like to share about yourselves? Well, I can't. Like, I'm on my way from. Uh... From my homeland, where my clan was attacked by another dragonborn clan. I'm just looking for new land to, for my clan to settle. I'm just sitting on deck and thinking about where to go. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. by the way, you can you can move your uh, tokens up onto the deck. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, see. Yeah, a similar thing happened. My like clan or whatever was. Uh, destroyed and now I kind of have nowhere to go so I'm looking to uh, kind of keep the name of my clan alive okay that's grand um, so as you're as you're talking amongst yourselves um, one of your pass your fellow passengers the the guy called Donny he starts talking to the captain and he says he heard some odd sounds coming from the cargo hold uh, as he slept there 
during the night and he's he's kind of he's a little scared this guy's very sort of mild-mannered sort mm -hmm. and somewhat jumpy about being at sea so the captain's well listening intently to what he has to say because that sounds quite strange <clears throat> um the captain is a female half orc uh, she's called Lant Rolda. Mm -hmm. She's tall. She's quite wiry. She's got matted dark gold hair and grey eyes. Uh, she wears leather clothing that's obviously seen a lot of use. And she has a animal companion. She's got a little grey-white cat called Geary. Dokes on him. And Geary's got the run of the ship. But you'll find him most often just curled up on her person somewhere. So Rold is, she's an imposing figure and she rules her crew with with an iron fist really, um, but she does have a honest and reliable reputation. Mm -hmm. She operates a sm this small freight, fleet should, rather um, as basically a, a trading operation. So she asks you guys, uh, have you heard anything? Did you hear anything during the night? I... Uh... I did. I did wake up in the middle of the night, and, and I think I heard something. Really? What was what sort of thing? I, it sounded like some sort of scratching. Hmm. Well, we've got to look into this. I don't like the, the thought of any stowaways being on board. Mm -hmm. Trouble is, um, this stretch of water is somewhat risky. You often get attacks from pirates or Sahogan raiders. Um, so I don't want to take any of my crew away. Would any of you help me in the search? Oh yes, I'll, I'll go and I'll go and help you. Yes. Yeah, I'll help up there if you need. Thank you. Um, uh, Donny and the other guy don't seem interested. <laughs> Donny because he's scared. The other guy because he's just sort of giving himself to himself. So, um, you start to search the ship. Uh, who's searching where? Oh, I want to search the lower decks, because that's usually where people hide. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll search the poop deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll search the lower decks as well. Okay. Is the, the car... I... I'm assuming the cargo hold's pretty tightly packed if this is freight ship. It's quite large, um, but it's not overly tightly packed. Oh, okay. Um, Rolda has the sort of reputation of uh, her sh her ships get there reliably, you know. Oh, okay. And so she tends to travel quite light, but with valuable cargoes. Oh, okay. I think that Brie is, she's not particularly enjoying uh, staying up on on deck. Okay. She doesn't particularly like the, the uh, open ocean. Yeah. So she's going to go down with the others, help them search. Okay. Oh, is that like a, a crow's nest? There is, yeah. Um, there is a lookout up there at the minute. Will I climb up to that? Absolutely. Um, let's see. Just give me an athletics roll, isn't it? Uh, is that d20 plus whatever it is? Yeah, d20 plus your... Remember to add your proficiency bonuses to any skills that you have proficiency with. Yes. Cool. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay. Um yeah, that's that's totally fine. Um no wait a second, that's not you. Wait, yeah, give, a, give me a rule. It's rolling. It says yeah. rolling. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not a catastrophe, um but You do not fall not and break your neck. You, <laughs> you get a little Rip way the up. Sails. <laughs> You get a little way up the rigging, but you suddenly feel very tired. And <laughs> it's like, oh, what's going on? So, um, yeah, it might take you a while. 
Okay. Yeah, basically a lot of quite a lot of nothing. Uh ocean's quite empty at the minute. Um Can I like look down at the ship? Can I see it at the ship? Looking down at the ship, um you don't see anything out of the ordinary, uh unless give us a perception rule. Um Yeah, she's doing it now. Okay. Okay, 14. That's pretty good. Um, You don't see anything on the ship. You do see some rather large shapes here and there in the water. Um, They're kind of hard to make out, but they're big, dark, sort of shadowy shapes below you. Okay. <clears throat> but they don't seem to be, you know, they don't seem to be coming towards the ship, or they don't seem to be moving overly much. Um, let's see. So, those of you below decks, do you want to give me a perception roll? And uh, tell okay. me how you're searching? Yeah, I'm searching like, um, like around where we sleep. Uh, can I like move the boxes I'm near to see if there's anything under them or uh, I... behind them? A lot of them are quite heavy, um, but you can certainly move some boxes. Right, Eli, that is. Uh, what are you rolling there? Uh, it's perception. Perception. Right. Okay. I'm going to be um, searching if. I... I'm allowed. I'm going to be searching anything in the boxes if I'm allowed, because you said it's high value cargo. <clears throat> so well, there might be that. not so much. A lot of them are sealed quite tightly. Um, okay. As, as the sort of hour wears on, that you're you've been searching for, Captain's getting kind of frustrated and mm -hmm. doesn't think there. There's nothing. Ordinary, or there's nothing you know out of the ordinary, I should say. Um, so because two of you have sort of heard this noise, she wants to continue searching. Um, okay. and let's see. So, uh, Rolda decides that, yeah, it's time we'll just crack open a couple of the crates and see, you know, some of the larger crates where someone could conceivably hide. Um, she asks you for your discretion. At this time, <laughs> she's oh, yeah. um, like, I, the people who hire me generally don't want their cargo to be fussed over and seen by others. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you could please keep this to yourselves. But if there's someone on board, I can't risk that either. Of course. Can... Oh, Do I have oh. all of your <laughs> all of your assent to that? Um, let's see, uh, Ja, are you going to stay up in the crow's nest or are you going to go down? Um, I'll go down. There's no, there's no real point in staying up if it's on there. Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing, you've, you've been up there for a wee while and haven't seen anything yeah, okay. uh, too pressing. How do I get rid of this dice? <laughs> Yeah, you just click somewhere on the screen, it should go away. Alright, okay. Okay, uh, Bree, are you down in the hold as well? Sorry? Uh, yes, I'm down in the hold. You just shove your mini down there as well. And I'll move you. Okay, so... Rolda starts uh, basically jimmying open boxes here and there. She moves over to this box. Uh, by the way, Jack, can you still not see any of this? Uh, yeah, I can't see anything. Ah, no. no refreshing. We'll sort that out for next time. Um, no I'll refresh, but... <laughs> right, so uh, Rolda starts opening up boxes. She peeks inside one. Nothing seems to be out of the ordinary there, so she closes it, hammers it back into place. 
place it, and then she moves over to this box and starts to open it. So when she gets the crate open, the first thing that you hear is her saying, what the... And just a puzzled stop in her speech. Um, so that might attract your attention. <laughs> yeah, so my little halfling ears prick up. <laughs> I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move next to the box. Right. Um, and the weird thing is, inside the box, um, held in place quite tightly and carefully with wooden stays, is what appears to be an empty barrel. Mm. An empty barrel. Interesting. <laughs> and, yeah, that's... Rolda just stared at her for a minute. And she's like, what? Why on earth would someone send a barrel? I tried, like... Can I try to move the barrel or see if there's anything mm -hmm. not ordinary about it? Okay. Um, so, you know, you touch the barrel. It's it's quite um, it is quite well, you know, securely held in to this crate, um, and certainly, just on first glance or even a close inspection. Seems completely ordinary. Okay. So there's empty barrel open. Open. Yep. The there's no lid. In fact, you can see into the bottom, and it's uh, seems completely clean. It's a bit weird that we're all just like <laughs> <laughs> looking at this empty barrel, completely ordinary. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so uh, nothing else in the box. Like, has, someone have, the has someone checked if there's anything like physically in the barrel? Like, has someone like stuck their hand in it? Yep. Anyone who wants to. I think I'm gonna. Now that you said that, I've just backed up. <laughs> I'm gonna stick my hand in it. I'm gonna stick my hand in it and see if there's anything <laughs> invisible <laughs> in there. Okay. You fake it and scare us. Ah, we all jump. <laughs> Suddenly, I probably would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, nothing happens. <laughs> I think I am gonna do that. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell as if, being <laughs> <laughs> and then to sort of quickly. Rolda jumps forward and yanks you back with great strength. <laughs> <laughs> strength, I'm only 40 pounds. Yeah, you hide your hand in your sleeve. <laughs> I can see that this it was a trick. It was a trick, right? Yeah. Yes. She, okay. she realizes. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna stare at at Bree for a moment and like. A bit annoyed. <laughs> I... <laughs> um, well, sort of, when when she realizes Bree's sort of jolly jeep, she sort of pushes her back forward. <laughs> what are you playing at? <laughs> I, I'm gonna cackle in that sort of grandma grandma way. <sighs> Roll a um... size and says, "Well." This is strange, but I don't know what else to do. Um, she goes off and checks. Some... And doesn't find anything. Hmm. Absolutely no sign of any, you know, any intruder. Or, you know, leavings of someone who's maybe been hiding behind something or anything like that. So, so the the empty barrel is still suspicious. <laughs> she does go back to it and starts stroking her chin again, but she's something at a she's sort of at a loss. Mm. There's got to be something here, but I I don't understand. 
Did you have your hand in there for long, Bree? Uh, I or, think. Or did your? <laughs> no, I just sort of, I just sort of stirred it around to see if it if it hit anything. Okay. Uh, no, there was there's no sign of anything. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back up and ask, like, what uh, the captain? Why is there just a box with a, an empty barrel in it? Oh, uh, the they're with you. Rolda is the captain. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't know. I I take contracts, and often they're qu individuals with some need of discretion, shall we say. Uh, this was one of those cases, and <laughs> it it beats me why this is here. Maybe the Unless... real contents yeah, were sure stolen the... and then replaced with a barrel. Hmm, that's a worrying thought. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if this comes back on me. <laughs> so, unless there's anything else you you can think to check, I am going to seal this back up. I don't think there's um, anything. I, think, I don't think no, there's anything. I don't think there's anything. Just the no. barrel. No. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, so she basically puts slams lead back on and nails it down again. And the journey continues much as it had. Until the following night. So, um, you might be, you know, getting, getting to bed, or I don't know if you're a late sleeper or anything like that, but um, it comes to about, what would be about two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and there's no mistaking what any of you hear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Uh quite loud scraping noises and can I hear it? Uh, I went up on deck I'm just sitting on deck it's oh like where are you breathing the fresh air. can I still hear it um if you're there then probably not given the the sound of the waves if you're out, out for a late night stroll on the decks uh, I'm not the quite yet sorry the captain is not either is it is the are the noises coming from outside or inside? Um, you can tell that the noises are coming from quite close to where you are. Inside. Inside. Can I tell from which direction they're coming? Yeah. Um, it's it's fairly obvious they're coming or they're coming from the north or. Actually, you know what? I haven't even worked out what direction it is north, but yeah, wow. <laughs> up, <laughs> up, <laughs> towards the pointy bit of the boat. Good. Okay, I'll 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 wake get up and walk up to the box with the barrel in it. Okay, you. There's no mistaking that the noise is coming from the box. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, I'm like awake as well. Can I go over? Because I'm oh, like, yeah. absolutely. You know. yeah. yeah. Let's go over with him. Um, a thief the... always returns to the scene of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> I bash the box open. <laughs> Rip it open. Aha! There's um... nothing there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and now you have to repay the uh, owner for a box. No. Um... I'm going to come up. I'm going to. Join them, but hang back a little. Okay. Uh, I try knocking on the box. Um, absolutely. Who who's knocking? Sorry. Me. Uh. Right. Uh. Yeah. Just gonna move you up. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, I'm always you. Um. Okay. So you knock on the box, and you actually hear a scrabbling sound. Very close to where, uh, if you knocked on the top of the box, you hear a scrabbling hand. Um, you do notice the crowbar that the captain used is lying on the other box, just on top. 
Uh, I'm gonna use it to open the box again. Okay. Um, give us a wee strength roll. Okay. Strength. Plus four. Oh man. <laughs> you have absolutely no trouble taking the top off the box again. So, inside you see a barrel, but instead of it being the way it was, you can see that inside the barrel there is, can only be described as another world. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. it's, like a, it's like you're looking through a window into a blasted desert wasteland. There's in the sky there's a hellish sun. It's mercilessly hot. You can actually feel it through the portal. But it seems to offer little in the way of light. Uh, in the distance you can see many figures. There are these humanoid but six-limbed bug man with sort of chitinous armor. Yeah, they're they're sort of roaming around doing various things that are hard to make out. Where, what, what where are we? Is? Like, re, like are, are we looking in from the sky or like ground you are, level? You or? are looking in um, really horizontally, so it's like gravity is different. <laughs> you know, if you're looking down, it's like you're standing there. Um, oh, okay. But it's it, like I say, you're looking down into the barrel. What creatures? Um, uh, sorry. What creatures are they? They're these uh, humanoid bug men. They look like anyway. Um, they're, you know, six limbed and they've got look like armored skin. Um, you can do a I think it's a wisdom roll or a lower roll or something like that to see if you can uh, work out anything about them. See if you've heard of them before. Um. I'm okay with wisdom. Yeah, I have plus three. 14. I mean, right. It would need to be a, a skill check of some, de you know, some um, uh, description. So it would maybe uh, history or let's see. I can do history. Nature. I can do history. Okay. Give me a history roll. There you go. Okay, is that a natural card? Hey. I don't understand how these wee cards work. Uh, so get that the green border is natural 20. Yeah, that's uh, not a natural 20. It's yeah, that was a 20. 17 plus 3. Okay, cool. Uh, still, that's a good roll. And yeah, you do remember tales of a, a strange oh, land, shall we say. Different world. Mm. It's very hard to know because this this is knowledge that's been that is obscure in the extreme and has sort of been passed off as merely a myth. But you seem to remember these, the names of these creatures being Thrycreen. Okay, so I'm gonna convey this. Uh, well, there are some there are some very old legends. Speak of such things. Called the Thrycree. So maybe that's what these. What? What do they do? <laughs> do I know what they do? do other than you know they other walk. Than bug. You other don't than have any bug people. Terribly clear <laughs> idea what they do. Um, you know that they're from. From what, from your memory, essentially, you know that they're from a, a desert world, possibly another plane of his existence. Okay. If we do like, can we check to see if it's like a recognizable different plane of existence or whatever? You could do, yeah. A recognizable different plane of existence. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, oh uh, yeah, I've been here last <laughs> last summer. I visited this place. And it wouldn't. It wouldn't really be something oh, yes. that you. Yes, we used to. We used to. We used to have 
weekend holidays. <laughs> a summer it. holiday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. The weather's great. But... <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Eridar, are you still on the... On the I will look, uh, yeah. I haven't passed up much time, so I'm just still out there. Okay. So no one told me. <laughs> it's just left here. <laughs> right. Um. Let's see. Uh. Let's see now. Ah, uh, brain fart. So you want to do a another history check check to see if you know anything about this this land? History. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. The process. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. Um. Should I roll one as well? Mm, yeah. Sure. Oh, <laughs> that was a natural 20. <laughs> well, I mean, see. my character um, is a storyteller, so... <laughs> she is. Um, well, you believe that you remember tales of a place called Athos. Um, it's often called the world of the Dark Sun. But... That is all that you can remember, even with such a amazing. It's pretty skills. dark. No, it it is quite dark. Um, the sun is strange. And oh, okay. It's it's very it's very red. It doesn't seem to get, even illuminate the land all that well, even though it's incredibly hot. Hmm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna put my hands through the portal. It's just too high. Oh, I like stop his hand. <laughs> we should throw something. Okay, just so, go. so uh, Yigbeth, you put your hand through the portal. Oh God, can I not <laughs> stop him? <laughs> if you like. You can like say something or we'll probably yeah. respond. <laughs> this is stop. Okay. We should throw something first instead of just shoving our hands in, you know, different planes of existence. <laughs> Recognizable or not. Did you learn nothing in school? <laughs> Okay, I'll like use the crowbar as an extension of my hand and put that through. Okay, um, so you stick the crowbar through, and it's a slightly strange sensation because you can feel the tug of gravity moving against the tip of the crowbar, but at the same time, it doesn't make any sense because it seems to be drawing it towards your feet. I, I look confused and back away a little. <laughs> <laughs> it it makes sense within a certain, you know, because you're looking down and horizontally at the same time into this barrel, then that it makes sense, but it's still a very odd sensation. Hmm. I kind of want to go tell what <laughs> that we found, you know. <laughs> A portal. <laughs> so, uh, well, what's your character's name? Eridar. Say, Eridar. <laughs> Found something, and then it's like motion him. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, he can... oh, can we tell the captain? Well, maybe. Yeah. Well, well if, you, her, her if you're a snitch, all... maybe. <laughs> First of all, before before anything else happens, you do hear that. You hear your own name, sort of being yeah. called. Ah uh, yeah, something like calling over and tell him like we found something down in the uh, in the barrel that we looked to last night or yesterday morning. Do you want look? Do you want to have a look? So you have a look and see exactly what they saw. <laughs> I just point at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's and, uh, okay, so I'm I'm like yeah, maybe we should tell the captain. Um, Seems reasonable to the township. Yeah. Just as you're deciding, that would be a wise, wise uh, course of <laughs> Just as you're deciding that, you you hear again this odd little clicking noise, and then another little clicking noise. Okay. So where do, can we tell where the scratching was coming from? Other than you know, in the barrel, like is it coming from inside the barrel? Yeah. Or did um, someone, something escape? You you didn't see it. Uh, the day before because the lid hadn't been flipped off but now when you look at the lid 
uh, the underside of the lid. You can see scratch marks on it. Are they any <laughs> recognizable panels? Um, <laughs> the, possibly not as an especial pattern, just just scratches. Okay. Long scratches. Uh, can I try and drop the barrel, like, so it will be horizontal? Um, you would have to roll the entire crate over. Um, or else was it the like glued to the bottom? <laughs> well, the the crate is sort of it's held in place by little stays of wood. Mm. I also kind of feel like you know we should tell the captain before we go tipping over the. Likewise. <laughs> the different. <laughs> it's like well, it's not like it's not like regardless, <laughs> regardless of the fact that it's regardless of the fact that it's her ship. <laughs> my years as a grandma have told me <laughs> never ever go off anywhere without telling someone where you're going. No, we're not going anywhere. Especially we... if we're going to another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> but Granny, it was a recognizable other dimension. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not, I just want to flip it, not go into it. <laughs> Like I don't think well, I, the captain I, I, has been ever trained. Told, never ever flip barrels of other worlds. <laughs> I don't think the captain like will other... know what to do with uh, portals to different dimensions. I'm not saying uh, yeah, like that's an, I think I should tell her because her ship. Well, yeah. Okay, it's someone. Just... Just... So okay, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going for it. So as yeah. you are backing or as you are heading for the stairs, you hear that a, another pair of clicks. They seem to be coming from two different sides of the barrel. And immediately afterwards, out burst as if they've been standing right next to the barrel, sort of just out of sight. Uh, bring these guys in. Um, yeah, I can't even see the tokens now, by the way. Two sewer <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Dire rats. Um. All right, we're gonna get these guys in eventually. What the hell is that? A cockroach? These seem to be the up close and personal humanoid figures uh, with six arms. They have these strange long staves that I they know. are menacing you with. <laughs> I unsheath my weapon, my morning star. Yeah, they are. Their antennas sort of get around, taking everything in as well as their as their eyes. But they seem to be making it again. It sounds like they're talking to each other in this sort of clicking, rasping. I'm sorry, what's the period? Yeah. I thought you said dire rats and then they just went to the bottom. <laughs> um, they're they're thrycreen. Yeah, but did you, I think you, maybe you cut out what happened. Um Try to... they bas oh who'd we lose? Um I think it's Ox. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's grand. Um yeah, these two uh, thrycreen jump basically burst through the barrel. First one, then the other. Um, okay. If they've been sort of just on the other side of the barrel, listening in or wondering what is going on as well. <laughs> <laughs> and they attack the closest person with nary a second's hesitation. And so we're going to uh, we're going to roll initiative. Yay! Okay. So let's see. Twenty. Oh, well, <laughs> what is this? I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of halfling luck here. <laughs> You're using up all your luck now, though. Like, I'm not gonna have anything for later. I get to reroll all ones on. Okay. <laughs> Halfling luck's gonna take me a lot. Break. 
and it's already taken me through 105 years of my life. I'm not going to give up now. My first roll as GM, I roll a one. <laughs> my second roll, I roll a flicking goddamn three. Ah, eight. Okay. <laughs> Now, how am I? What is going on here? Can I still edit this? What happened? Um, I didn't actually roll initially. I have to actually roll initially. Did I just draw a line on the. Oh, uh, give us yeah, a. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where is it? Initiative. You've just cut the boat in half. <laughs> I can't see it. It's just a blue line and a blue background for me. Why are you in here twice? Hmm? Strange. Um, nah. Okay, so... Yggbeth gets a... what is it? Eleven. Where did I go? <laughs> I got I got taken out of the initiative order. No, you're at the top. You're Too high. Me. I'm at the top nah. so far. No, you well. did actually get taken out. Yeah, I'm not in the initiative order anymore. Wow. That's weird. Um, right, I'll tell you what, I will put you back, I think I can just put you back in. Um, are you in now? Yeah. Okay, so the order is Bree, Yigbeth, Eridar. I need, uh, got me in there now. <laughs> uh, I'm refreshing, hold on. What breath are you thinking? A crumb. Hmm. Right. Hmm. So, these things are definitely attacking. Definitely. They... Uh, no two ways about it. to not be... Um, particularly open to negotiation. <laughs> no. Okay. Click, 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 click. <laughs> I think, yeah, if, if you've got some mad clicking skills. <laughs> uh, luckily... Mm -hmm. Ah, you took it, didn't you? Luckily, no, I didn't take language spell. But luckily, the spells that I have which require uh, language, or which require speaking, don't mm -hmm. require understanding ah. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's all good too okay is everyone back in uh, is everyone ready to do a fight 15 in the turn order you roll the 16 oh yeah why is he not here do I, I have a token I don't think I do I can see the tokens now Right, sure. you should. Um... Okay, so the order is Bree, Ja, Eridar, Yigbeth, uh, the first three Kreen, and then Ar Erda. Wait a second, why are you in here twice? <laughs> uh, am I? Uh, what, what was your score? 14. 14, okay, I'll get rid of that one. Don't know why it is there. I think okay. that's just for you because we're not yeah. seeing. I'm not seeing. Yeah, for me. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, okay. So it's Bree's turn first. So now. So now you can move your speed, uh, and do take an action. Um. I. I think I'm going to move to the nearest. I'm going to go and <laughs> I'm going to go and sit down on a bed. Nice. Are you actually getting into the hammock? No, I'm just sitting down on it. That's great tactics but... there. <laughs> um, that might be tricky. I'm sitting... I'm sitting down on it. Remember, it's a hammock. Yeah, I've done that in real life. You just okay. have to. You just have to hook your legs around the edge. 
I'm going to ask for some sort of acrobatics role. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll just stand. to get into that. I'm going to slingshot myself forward. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move over here then. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to. As funny as it would be, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah. Um. No, I just need to. I am going to yell at the closest one, the this one. Okay. I'm going to yell at it. Who do you think you are, you overgrown cockroach? <laughs> and... <laughs> it's a vicious monk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't a particularly good insult, so... um. Okay, so that attack is 10 versus his armor class, mm -hmm. uh, which does not hit. <sighs> Darn it. Oh, well. Okay, so it's just. So essentially, what I've done is just yell at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your, your yeah. scream missed. <laughs> Could I stealth you? Could I stealth behind them and put the lid on the barrel? Okay, they're not actually in the barrel now, they're just sort of standing at the very yeah, edge but... of it. Like, uh, can I get behind them and do that, yeah. and then just be behind them? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fine. Um, do you want me to move you into... Uh, yeah, just use... behind them, if I can, yeah. I'll say you go there. Uh, they don't know where you are. Um, oh yeah, give me a stealth roll. Uh, uh, that was stealth, then. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, can I also put the lid back on the barrel with that stealth? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll allow it. Okay. They didn't. They didn't see you move. They might hear you putting the lid back on, of course, but that's fine. Um, just give me a strength roll. You're not. It's not going to be a big okay. thing. I'm just really looking for a critical failure. <laughs> hey. Oh, <yeah. laughs> You have no problem. Smash it down. <laughs> In fact, you do it so well, they don't even hear you putting it back. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Eridor, it's you. Right, okay, all right, well. I'll just run over to the closest one and mm -hmm. hit it with my katana. That sounds like a good idea. And... Mm -mm. I'm using my katana too. Okay, 20 versus AC is a hit. Yeah, and then... And which the roll? Is it sort of... Is it a flat thing, or is it another roll? Uh... Uh... I think, yeah, it's not like a 20 and then a 6 damage. Right, okay. Okay, um... Let's see... Just gonna shove that in here. Uh, can you see the red number when you click on them? Or is that just for me? Uh, if you click on that uh, Thry Cream 2, do you see any numbers above his head? It's only the number that is number 2. Right, ah, that's okay. Right, uh, so that bounces off his armor, clearly causes him a little pain, but only does a little bit of damage. So, who's next? Yigbeth. Okay, I go up to this one and smack him in the face with my morning star. It's a d20 for attack, right? Uh, d20, yep. Okay. Plus 4. 17, that is gonna hit even before a modifier. Okay. So, uh, uh, if you roll damage now. 1d8. Eight. Oh, that's lovely. Plus, is it plus something? Uh, is it supposed to be plus something? Because it... uh, I think it should be at least plus your strength modifier. It's plus four then. Yeah, we can look that up afterwards, but uh, yeah, that's a good roll. Okay, so that's, uh, what was that, 12? Damn, 
he's strong. Um, he lets out a cry of pain. It's piercing what, what damage, would... by the way. Oh, uh, piercing damage. Matters. Okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, I don't think these guys are sort of um, weak to anything in particular. But, hey, they're not resistant to anything in particular either. So, uh, right, who is it now? Thrykreen number one. He doesn't like what you just did. And... He attacks with his this long staff that he's got. And he rolls a 10 versus your armor class. I'm going to guess that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, my armor 60. Yeah. And he takes another swing, because that's something that he can do. <laughs> and that is 16 versus your armor class. So that's uh, your armor class is 16, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a hit. And he does a d8 slashing damage. Oh, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm down to nine hit points. Yeah. Done your character. Um. Right, and the second one turns to face Eridar. And again, second verse, same as the first. He rolls, oh wow, he rolls a 21 versus your armor class. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he rolls 3 damage. He's going to attack again. And that's a, let's see, that's a 16 versus your armor class. And my armor class 16, so. Right. And oh, another one, that's 2 damage. <laughs> Okay. With them having moved, it's back up to Bree. Okay. So the insult didn't work. I'm going to try <laughs> another little bit of verbal combat, which hopefully <laughs> will work slightly better. Uh, still think... at the same uh, number one. I think the uh, name of this episode should be Shouting at Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to glare at it Ooh. And, and not shout, but whisper. <laughs> whisper. Oh, whispers. that doesn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, I'm just sort of in the corner mumbling now. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it wouldn't, like, you're, you're really far away. <laughs> I did. Probably wouldn't even hear it. Yeah. He he puts a hand up to where his wow. ear would be and says, What? <laughs> you um, know, he, he clicks. <laughs> yeah. I rolled a Speak four. Hmm. Just so I'm clear on the uh, spellcasting thing, it has to hit their armor class and they can make a save against it. Yes. Is that right? And the DC is in the spell. Okay, cool. That's grand. Um, is there any move you want to make or uh, so forth? I've cast a spell. That's one action. Do I get two actions a turn, or is it one action and a, a uh, one action and a move? Okay. Yeah. Um, remember, you can flank uh, creatures. Yes. I think I might move over. Hang on, let me measure this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over he here. Yep. Uh, there. Uh-huh. Uh, so now I can... Next turn, I can aim at the other one, see if that one is slightly easier to... Yeah. Get at. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, ja, it's your go. Uh, can I just hit the number two? Yeah. Uh, bug? I, I believe you're actually flanking him as well with Eridar. Okay. So uh, that means you get an advantage on your roll. Um, what would the advantage be? Uh, it's Was, essentially... Do I roll, roll it twice? You roll it twice and pick the higher okay. number. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, I'll just roll over the thing. Um, uh, 
Okay, so that's a. Oh, All right, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> and that's okay. a of honey, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's awesome. Um, that's a critical hit. So you get to roll your damage twice. Uh, it's the damage plus like one d four plus something. Uh, yeah. What are you attacking them with? Sorry, at your bow. A, a sickle. Oh, a sickle. Oh, yeah. you need to be you need to be closer in uh, to do. Oh, can I, yeah. Can I just say they moved? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, no, you swing yes. your sickle at the air and <laughs> <laughs> with a natural twenty, it still hits. hits the air, <laughs> slicing molecules in half. Um, so, yeah, basically, you roll your attack, and you roll it again, and or you roll your damage twice, but you only add the modifier once. Uh, okay. Okay. One and oh sorry, a five and a three, so that's eight damage. Nice. Uh, plus eight. Right, you can see that he's not entirely he's looking like he's getting a bit um hurt, shall we say. <laughs> I don't like it. Um Eridar, so here you go. Right. Uh yeah, we have to keep hitting him. Okay, and again, you're uh, flanking, so it is all good. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're all. So that's a 15, is it? Yeah. That hits. <laughs> um, and nine damage, so... He is looking very worse for wear. He lets out a little hiss and a click of what can only be described as extreme unhappiness. <laughs> uh, Yigveth. Okay. Unless you want to move, Eridor. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, I just checked and it says uh, when attacking with a weapon you add your ability modifier the same, the same modifier you used for attack roll to the damage. So it was a plus four. Plus four. Uh, okay. So I'm just gonna attack again. Okay. Uh, number one. Eight. No, Ooh, eight doesn't do it. Mm. Uh, oh, I just had <laughs> some uh, some interesting information seems to have come to light. <laughs> right. Uh, Ox says that. Uh, that vicious mockery and dissonant whispers aren't spell attacks. Which means right. that I shouldn't... Shouldn't even... I'm, I'm willing to stand with what's already happened because it's hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in the future... Uh, it's just the saving throw? It's just the saving throw. Ah, okay. I thought there's something kind of odd about that. Right. Yeah, I mean, combat for so long, you forgot how it works. So you don't have to aim wrong, you. Like, oh. You don't have to aim your shouts and whispers? No. <laughs> no. That just... makes more sense. <laughs> okay, um, let's see, Yigbeth, do you want to move at all? Um, no. <laughs> just stay here. Okay. Uh, right, we're on to Thread Queen number one. Again, he's going to have at you. And... With his glaive, he 17 versus your armor class, which is a hit, and he does uh, four damage. Oh god, I'm down to <laughs> five. <laughs> and with his other swing, <laughs> am I just gonna die here? <laughs> um, uh, he runs a 12. Okay. So Don't I get them. any like damage reduction from his attacks? Um, I think I mean the armor that you get is like uh, it makes you harder to hit, so that adds to your armor class. But it, uh, yeah, once you're hit, you're hit. As far as I know, you have it. You, you are just just so I know. What? It doesn't. Erzar, you have healing. No, oh, no, no. I don't have healing. Ah, oh, right. right. It's, it's like next level or something. I okay. do. I'm a fighter. 
<laughs> right. I can heal a whole 1d4. Oh, of course. I can heal myself. Okay. It's... I can heal myself, but I can't heal other people. It's Yigbeth's paladin. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, oh. Right. Uh, the second Thray Cream. With his glaive, he actually makes he makes his two attacks, one at Eridar and one at Ja. Um, so swinging at Eridar with something terrible, five. <laughs> so that's a miss. <laughs> ja, you take the other end of the staff. <laughs> and that's a 16 versus your armor class. Yeah, that does it, yeah. Cool. And he does six damage. Okay. And it's back to Bree. All right. Uh, <laughs> how much health has everyone got? Uh, has anyone health. actually five. has anyone actually been damaged? Yes. I'm at seven health, but I should be fine. I can heal myself. Big problem. Because I think you're the only one who hasn't been hit. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, because you're just standing there in the corner shouting and whispering to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully that's going to be more effective. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm wondering... Yes? Because I could go up behind the other one and try and either stab it or whack it. Mm -hmm. Um, I only hit it once well, though, so I don't think like it's not. That near doesn't death. do much damage. <laughs> Does everyone think they can survive the fight? Yeah. Okay. Um, whenever you reach zero hit points, you're not dead. Dead. Okay. You're basically knocked out. Um, you can die from that, but um, you're not dead immediately. Is the I'm gonna move fifteen feet to here. Can I can I use the on hands on myself? I think so, <laughs> unless it specifically says no. I'm I'm assuming you can't touch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining. I'm just imagining sort of like this rubbing himself, sort of rubbing, <laughs> rubbing their chest. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance, Blondie sings. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Bri, yeah, I think got? I'm going to use my other spells, and I'm going to try and whisper again at <laughs> the uh, at number one. Okay. Uh, hopefully, this will actually work. So it needs to pass a DC 13, 13 wisdom check. Wisdom. Okay. Let's see. Uh, six. Will six do? No. No. Which means okay. it takes 12 psychic damage. <laughs> as, as Gandalf the Grey once said, damn. <laughs> uh. And if it has a reaction available, it must move as far as its speed allows directly away from me. Uh, I don't think it is able to do that unless there are rules for trying to go past people. Well, um, he would be able to move into this square because um, he's running away from you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that would provoke an attack of opportunity. In fact, See, I am useful, guys. From both of us. <laughs> Let's see. Is it from both of us? And I thought yes. he was just here for the moral support. If he had moved here only, then it would only be Yigbeth. But since he has to move as far away as he can, it's both of you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, both of you roll a, a sort of basic attack. Yeah, I did. Oh, sorry. Um, 15 versus armor class. That hits. Five slashing damage. And let's see. 18, that's a hit. So what do you, what's your damage? Uh... Hmm. 
One plus four plus five. So, um, ah, take that, you glorified housefly! <laughs> so, <laughs> instead of running here, he can, what did you hit him with, Yig? Uh, my morning star, piercing damage. Right. Um, you embed your morning star into his head, and he drops like a sack of potatoes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you should probably be using like the normal thing. For this. Dead. Okay, Jummy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> can I... oh, and I've also just realized uh, Jammy should have had a <laughs> attack opportunity there as well. Nah. Okay. Oh, well, it would be dead <laughs> anyway. Yes. <laughs> Let's just say you got to be hit in as well. Um, yeah, can I just attack the, the last one, the number two? Mm hmm. Options are uh... <laughs> I attack everyone else in the room. <laughs> um, Surprise! <laughs> uh, what was the? Oh yeah. Okay, that's thirteen versus arm class, which misses. Oh. Sadly, oh. it's Eridar. Okay, let's keep on attacking. It's wailing on it. Yep. Yeah. It's. Plus five damages. Yep. And then okay. He's... he's looking very not well. And Yigbeth. Uh, can I move? Can I move over here and attack him. Yeah. Uh, I can just do it like this. Does this work? Um, let's see. Oh, I just press something. Hold it now. Um... It's giving me a syntax error. Oh, that's yeah, it did that for me as well. I need to. Yeah, I have like stuff in every box, I think. Yeah. Are you trying to ping the map or something, or? Uh, I'm trying to. No, like... to do the attack thing. Yeah. I need to add something to the crit damage box, I think. Uh, what? How does like one work? Um, well, just... Uh, yeah. just uh... Add another die for the type that you use for the damage, I think. I'll just put zero in there for now and like look it up later. Yeah. Mm. Right, so... it's right. like yeah, if you have one D eight damage, yes. Okay. Put one D eight in crit damage. Well. Wait, why did it roll okay. three? It's supposed um, to be roll three. It rolled like, two. Yeah, yeah, this, two you dice. have to start the first attack roll unless you have advantage, basically. Yeah, that's how the best work. Hmm. I think I might change the way flanking works slightly to you have to be directly opposite. You know, you have to have someone directly opposite each other, you know, the enemy. But yeah. well, I'll think about that later. Um, so that's 14 versus armor class, which... No, it's 22 because you are flanking under the old rules. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's 10 piercing damage, which flat out splats them. Wait, I don't understand what happened just now. I it like I wrote it said like I rolled two attack dice. Yeah, because if you have advantage you count both, but if you don't have advantage you only count the first attack roll basically. Ah, okay, so it just so rolls them the all advantage. the time, two all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So both of them are now corpses and we're out of initiative. Huzzah! Your first mm. fight is a massive success. <laughs> Apart from the At least the second half of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'd say immediately we should seal the barrel need... again before more of them come through. I, I did. I needed a warm up. Uh, I like clothes to put the lid like, on. Like spikes in it or something. <laughs> and they can't open it again. Drop a box of nails in, <laughs> shake it off. <laughs> Um, so that whole thing lasted really only a couple of seconds, um, but you hear stomping on the stairs down, and in runs our good captain and says, what's going on here? Uh, you seem to have a little bit of a an infestation. An, a what? What do you mean? This... You 
And she moves in and... A, a giant uh, humanoid otherworldly bug. <laughs> From where? The crate? <laughs> From the crate, yes. Yeah. But that, uh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Can we... You're right. tell, that, tell that to the two giant bug corpses on the... She, she turns and looks at the giant bug corpses and the... You know what? You have me there. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go and lift the lid off the barrel. Okay. And five more for that. <laughs> I, I grab my katana. Ready. I put, I put the lid on. I, I put the lid on at start the fight. Okay. After a sort of stunned few moments, um, she says, "Okay, lid back on the crate now. Now, please. <laughs> Just throw it overboard." <laughs> but I did that. <laughs> okay. None of you saw this, okay? So what? Exactly. <laughs> Neither did I. And we're just bug corpses. <laughs> the other were only portal. <laughs> Guys, N none of that happened. <laughs> but it's <laughs> dangerous. It might kill people. We're gonna go about our lives. I think it's more dangerous than the bug people. Let's be honest. Can't we just <laughs> throw it off the po off? Like into the sea, and then like all the no, people. No, the sea, the sea will yeah, fill. Yeah, the sea will empty because like, yeah, the will all the water we have drained out into the desert world. It's going to be a perfect balance. It would almost be worth seeing, but <laughs> no, we we we'll, we'll just keep it closed. I have a contract to deliver this in a timely fashion. Anything else? No, going. To I have a voice. contract to stay alive. <laughs> I'm going to post a guard 24 7. I mean, we sleep here. There's not that yeah. many places to go. That That is true, but we're only we're only about a day and a half away. We could get the dragonborn on top of the crate. Can I move my bed like next to the yeah. crate? <laughs> In case. So I can most definitely what if, hear if okay. there's any scratching. What, what if you turn the crate upside down and then if they try to get out, they'll just be pushing down? <laughs> But then they'd be sort of walking and around. If they, with the if, they finally manage to, if they finally manage to scratch through the wood, the boat sinks. <laughs> <laughs> and then it fills with water. It's a perfect plan. <laughs> Actually, what would happen? Because wouldn't it, it, wouldn't it just sort of drain the entire ocean? Yeah, that's, of that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I... possibly. Possibly not the best idea. Maybe you'll oh, train the not, entire no. dimension the into the ocean. <laughs> hey, how many of you have had the opportunity to drain the entire sea yeah. into an, uh, a different plane of existence? Well, I can think of new <laughs> stories. <laughs> First session, you can end two realities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you don't have any any objections, she uh, hammers up, you know, seals up the crate with a look of panic and goes and gets some for guards. I, I frown. Says, Please just let's let's get through this voyage and get this goddamn thing off the boat. She's rather shaken, no. even though she's a very experienced captain no, who's no doubt seen a lot. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and well, she says, as the guard is sort of posted, and she heads back upstairs. Night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I? Don't let the bed box fight. Can I take a closer look at the? Uh, take a closer look at those bugs. Yes, you can. Um, are they? Are they wearing anything? Is there any sort of sights other than the weapons? Is there any sort of signs of intelligent thought? Uh, and yes. Hold on one second, and I'll find a little bit more information about this topic. It's not that I'm looking stuff up; I'm just remembering really well. Okay, um, so <laughs> you can see the signs of a, a quite a primitive society. They're actually wearing little sort of um, belts with with some items on them. They they have again they have those uh, long glaive like weapons. They also have little three sided um, 
they look like throwing stars, only bigger. Um, so um, they clearly have, some, you know, some, at least some means of acquiring weaponry. Okay. But they're, either, they're fairly simply adorned. Either through stealing from other creatures. Yeah. It doesn't... It, if these things are intelligent, it doesn't look like it would be inconceivable that they would make something like this. Okay. Oh. So. I'm going to <clears throat> shuffle off to... Uh, if if there's nothing else that the rest of the party want uh, wants my help with, I'm going to shuffle off and take out my uh, my notebook and, and write down. Can we rest <laughs> and like recover? Dear diary. <laughs> yes. Dear, dear diary. Today we today we fought some evil bug people from hell. <laughs> it was the best. Well, day I mean, ever. someone's someone's got to tell the story. This is True. the best birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how do I regenerate hit points, by the way? Okay, um, let's just see. I'm gonna have to look up the rules on this a little bit, um, as I've forgotten. I think whenever you take a short rest for about an hour, you uh, basically roll your hit dice and get that plus your uh, your modifier, your constitution modifier back. Uh, but since you, you if if you get to sleep like a full night or something about six or seven hours, you get your full uh, health full, health points back. Full rest with the four hour thing. So an elf. That's true. Yeah, I because you're an elf, you don't sleep. You go into a sort of trance. Yep. Okay. Uh, long rest is a period of standard downtime, eight hours long. Um, so, let's see, regains all lost hit points, any spent hit dice, and, uh, yeah, any, basically whenever you're resting you can sort of uh, reset your spells, if you're a wizard. I'm not exactly sure how it works for a bard, but, um, presumably it's something similar. Okay, so, can I also like move my bed to next to the box? Sure. Um, let's see. Um, there we go. <laughs> oh my god, it's an actual <laughs> object. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to sleep with... with. Who's yeah. the red icon? Um, yeah, that's me. Is that Vop? Yeah. I'm, I'm far too far too old. Right. You want to move your bed? No, I just almost moved my. Uh, I almost moved Bree into the same bed. <laughs> uh, right. Well, yeah. hey, whatever happens between your characters, <laughs> I'm sure it won't get weird in real life. Yeah, there there are some 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 problems from sort of like a, a whole. There's the whole sort of size thing. <laughs> True. Yeah. It would it would never work. It would never work. Yeah, so like I'm a two, two meter tall dragon man, if not maybe not. Mm. <laughs> I'm a fighter, you're a bard. Just wouldn't work out. Eh? So yeah. I think like dragons lay eggs. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Mm. We're, we're gonna have to get into the deep lore. <laughs> <laughs> the deep lore. <laughs> So, um, time passes, uh, you may sleep, you may not, but you um, <laughs> are again wakened by the sort of, uh, the morning bell. And time passes, as indeed it always will. Indeed. <laughs> as you can assume. <laughs> um, and in the morning, you go back out onto the deck and you get your first clear sight of land. And what you're heading wow. towards. Wow! The, the great city of Se Meaba. And that is where we're going to finish. Game done. Cool. Well, we, I can finally see the ship. Nice. Hooray! Just in time. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> Good timing there.
<laughs> oh, look at those barrels. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Uh, what do I, so I just rolled uh, 1d20 to regenerate health? Was it um, because you had a long rest instead of a short one, um, you get oh, okay. everything back. Um, if you're out doing a sort of, you know, adventure during the day, you have to spend your hit dice, and uh, you know you don't get those back until you take a long rest. Cool. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So hopefully that wasn't that wasn't too irritating or <laughs> weird. <laughs> um and yeah. So has anyone got any uh any questions or Notable things need what need asking. Um, no, not really. That's fine. It's all right. I think we kind of we got used to it at the end. Mm. Yeah, it it uh, you get faster at it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Oh shit! I and I finally have my shitty picture of Jamie. <laughs> Dragonborn do lay eggs. Yeah, get them off. Get them off. Oh, According things... to the D&D Forgotten Realms wiki. Yeah. Things you didn't know that you needed to know. <laughs> yeah. um... Draw all over the ship. <laughs> it's fair. Um, there. The night. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that, that's an H <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> Gonna try to do that H. <laughs> the night I had. <laughs> okay, there. Draw some some land like over here. Look, land. It's all teal for some reason. Night, night, ox. Ah. So, um. <laughs> Spooky. Uh, Halloween Spooky spectacular. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> Who's writing that? Who's yellow? You have no yellow. There's a ghost. You can change your. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's no yellow, train, right? There's a train to ghost. Fish. <laughs> the train to fish. Don't eat yellow ghosts. Very wise. He's... He's... Hmm. <laughs> Is that Jaws? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> the grey shades. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> What's everyone else's movement speed? 35. 30. 30. Okay. Okay, so I can move as fast as the Dragonborn with my spell. Because yeah. I've got uh. a long strider. <laughs> Do you guys know how the attacks of opportunity work? It's when you move it's when you move out of a square next to someone else, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Uh, every square around your character is called a threatened square, and if you move into it, it's fine. But if you move out of any threatened square, um, uh, you invoke an attack of opportunity. However, um, you can make a what's called a careful move, which is basically just moving one square, 
and you can move out of a threatened square without invoking the attack of opportunity. Wait, so what's a threatened <laughs> square? Um, if you look at your character, if you look at every square around it, so that's eight squares mm -hmm. uh, that are around it, those are your threatened squares, and the same with any other character. So if I move you into them, I'll invoke... Uh... So if you see the cap the captain's um captain's square or the cap where the captain is um that sort of eight square circle around them is her threatened squares mm -hmm. so if you move in like that that's fine but if you move oh, okay. in the other direction then you invoke an attack opportunity unless you make a careful move which is basically just a one square move That so takes, that, does that, that take up like oh. all my movement? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, it's a kraken attacking the ship, <laughs> but only the <laughs> low. But somehow What's only. What's useful infographic? <laughs> I just found an infographic on uh, how to tell how to tell a person apart from forty snakes in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> this is information we all need. <laughs> the the. Gigantic Kraken is only attacking the like the lower part of the ship for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> like it somehow pierced through the middle of the ship and got only to the lower decks. Yeah, really bad. The Kraken's like a level twenty four monster, so I think it could. Yeah, it could. <laughs> Whatever it wants. Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> there is of course the Tarask. <laughs> which I'll have to have you fight. <laughs> Maybe next session. Basically, Godzilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Tarask is the uh, is the tutorial in uh, Knights of Pen and Paper too. How many experience <laughs> do we get for all of this? Because oh yeah, um, let me just calculate that. I had the number and I forgot to write it down. Can I be level three so I can get my bear panther? <laughs> just level <laughs> twice. Wow. Can I get? Can I get my bear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... I do want the bear, but it has you just, you challenge just... rating is too high. You wake look on, up look the on next. <laughs> you just wake up the next. You just wake up on the next morning after the fight, and there's just a bear next to your bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, UPS delivers so well these days. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, why can I not find the thing that I was looking for? So, um, sure. Calculator. Why are you useless? Okay, everyone gets one hundred and twenty five. XP. Hey. How many do we need to level up? Um, I think it's right level. Level two is at uh, three hundred XP. Okay, and sorry, what are we at there? One two five. One two five. Okay. Hello. All right. It's connected. Uh, where do I see how much uh, experience Sorry. points I need? I need for each level. Uh, in the manual. Table. Yeah, there's a table. Can that be right intro and outro music? Can you play like sound 15. effects? Um, like these sound effects. Possibly, although it'd be kind of awkward. Mm. You'd need to have them on SoundCloud because the jukebox is linked to SoundCloud. Mm. I like, I think I like where this, uh... <laughs> I <laughs> should add that on. <laughs> what happened while I was gone? I like where this campaign is going, because <laughs> planes were always my favourite thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it it can go in various directions, shall we say. <laughs> um, I I did start playing Planescape recently, and uh, there's it's an awesome setting. Although yeah, the game sort of ended up turning me off. But... Well, there is some inspiration there. Let me <laughs> say. Is a but very... not directly. I mean, I'll the, tell you, you know... what's a, tell you what's a fun, uh, fun setting is feng shui. <laughs> feng shui is an amazing setting. It's based right? on it's based on trashy Hong Kong a- action flicks. I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, shui. but like, all of the trashy Hong Kong action flicks. So it's like, it's like gangster, but it's also samurai but it's also sci-fi cyberpunk <laughs> but it's also fantasy because <laughs> nice. uh, like, hmm. uh, the whole thing is that there's this way of time traveling and so you get people from the different eras okay that sound actually pretty cool um yeah Right, so uh, I think if there's nothing else, I am going to go on to relax, because <laughs> okay. I've been weirdly stressed out all day. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, if anyone, like, we, s- we sort of decided on doing uh, a thing where each character has a secret, yeah. that only the character um... and the DM knows. Uh-huh. I haven't come up with mine yet. Yeah, me neither. So, just so like, everyone <laughs> yeah, knows. Um, it, it's not something that's, that's essential, but um, yeah, if one or two characters having that is kind of fun. Um, actually, I remember playing Shadowrun once, and um, our GM had made me really paranoid. <laughs> so he ran, he ran a session where we were trying to track down a bounty hunter, like this legendary assassin who, you know, is sort of a man of a thousand faces type thing. And we had a guest player and near the end of the session, just when the, the dude was about to strike, we hadn't found him yet. And I ended up pulling my gun and in fact convincing everyone else in the party to pull my gun on the guest player, who it turned out wasn't the assassin. <laughs> <laughs> so secrets can be fun. <laughs> Also, if anyone uh, has character art, just send it to me, and I'll make like a thing which I can post, uh, which I can like uh, put on the video when the the roll d20 mm-hmm. screen. I have is the very room. badly lighted picture that is now my roll twenty picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'd be good. Um, all right. And you're gonna upload to YouTube? Well, yeah. just pretty should, awesome. we, should we do it uh, private? And just on, and just post it in the chat. Yeah, I can do. I mean, if I, I mean, I it's up to everyone else. But uh, I don't really care. Either. I don't mind either way. Don't mind. Uh, Bob. Yeah. Do you mind if we make it public? No, I don't mind. I okay. don't mind at all. Okay, cool. great. That's the end of the first session. First session, yep. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. Nice, that was fun. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining. Yeah, I enjoyed Ooh. it. Yeah, good. Cool. A lot of fun good. to roleplay again. Nice. Yeah, it's nice to be back at GMing as well. <laughs> Although... <laughs> So let's be role playing yeah. again legally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did you buy the books? <laughs> <laughs> I did actually order my first D and D book today, so hey. Oh wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> listen, listen, my mum says I'm cool, so <laughs> Okay, night-night, folks. Night. Bye. Bye. Night.